Welcome back to Who Chose. Today on Who Chose, by popular demand, we are going to be cleaning clay balls. Not just cleaning, but we're also going to be sterilizing them for reuse in hydroponics. Not just hydroponics, lecker, any use that you have for clay balls in the gardening world, we're gonna clean and sterilize them. Now this isn't a video I planned on doing. The comments on the video that was posted yesterday were, were so overwhelming that I was like, how can I not do this video? There was just a bunch of people going, find a better way. There was a small minority that was just like, burn them. I, I know we've all been victimized by clay balls. I'm gonna try three different techniques and hopefully we settle on a technique that is easier than the technique that you're currently using. Okay, so to start with, you're gonna have a couple of different states that the balls are gonna be in, depending on the type of grow, obviously, how old the clay is. I don't really ever think that the clay can get too old if it gets fractured enough, maybe, because we can just reset it. It's literally inert, and I don't think we'll have any problem burning it. I'm not sure if we'll get some of the rocks exploding, but that's what we're here to find out. Now, the three states that these will be in, they'll be wet, dry, or full of roots. And I guess you can have like full of roots that are wet and full of roots that are dry. Depending on how long you've got, usually you'll just want to remove the clay and start immediately. You don't really want to have to dry it out. So we're going to sort of assume that the roots are wet and the methods we're going to be using are physically by hand removing the roots, mechanically removing the roots with the machine and we're going to burn the roots. And then after we've cleaned all of the organic matter off, we can then treat them. So separate the stuff that is relatively clean from the stuff that has roots. Stuff that has roots will look like this. It's gonna be relatively annoying to clean. I'm not really gonna go over the hand removing roots. You kind of know the pain associated with that already because everyone's done it. If you were doing this by hand, you'd just be rubbing it and rubbing it till the roots gave up as much of the clay balls as possible. Let's get to the second physical method, which is mechanically removing them. Now look, I know not everyone is going to have one of these. If you have a hydroponic facility where you need to mechanically remove the roots from the clay balls and you want to save money that way, it's probably a good investment. If you're only a home gardener, you're probably gonna to wanna to do the physical method because a 300 and something dollar mixer is probably not worth your time if it's only being used for that. However, I use it for a lot of things. I mix my cocoa perlite in it, Gloria, any media that I need mixed, I just use this. So it is dual purpose, and I guess you could use it for concrete. I'm just gonna put half the clay balls with the roots into this. And you can see, moving those roots around has released a bunch of the clay balls already. Let's just turn it on. I think it's working. I'm gonna take out like the bulk of the roots. Okay, so that kind of worked. We got most of the clay balls out of the roots and what roots are left are kind of just clumps. That's what we were left with. So that was all stuck in the roots. Uh, yes, I'll have to go through this by hand because it's just so thick. It depends, like how valuable are these clay balls to you? How much effort is worth that many clay balls? That was really simple, but again, is it worth buying one of these for? How many pots do you need to do? So yes, you can use a cement mixer to physically remove the roots and it works pretty well. Next, fire. Now, I wasn't quite sure whether you meant fire to sterilize or fire to get rid of the roots. So we're gonna do both, I guess. Now, the thing I'm worried about with fire, well, there's a couple of things I'm worried about with fire. First, it's fire. Second, if we burn the roots and they turn to ash, is it going to affect, is it going to affect the pH of our nutrient? That's the main thing I'm worried about. Third, uh, to less of an extent, but still an extent, is it going to damage the clay balls? I don't think so. They're made in a kiln, so 
they should be fire resistant, but are they gonna explode? Because they have air pockets in them. We'll try it. So the other thing I was a bit stuck on was how to use fire. And I was gonna use this chicken mash, but yeah, yeah, they just, they just fall straight through. That was what I was gonna use. The only way that I can think of using fire, well, there's no, I can't, I don't, I don't think anyone's gonna have stuff laying around that's not price prohibitive. So we're going to first try and cook the roots off. I don't think that's gonna work, but we'll give it a go. Okay, so here I have an LPG cylinder and a heat torch kit. We're just gonna connect up the heat torch. So here I have the leftovers from that physical test we just did. I mean, due to the size of this, you're just not gonna be able to process much and it's a lot of effort. Practically, hmm, we'll see. <laughs> Okay, look, yes, we are freeing up some of the balls. That's gonna take forever to burn through. <laughs> really worried about this camera, sorry. And look, if I'm worried about that camera, it's quite dangerous. <laughs> Look, it's working, <laughs> but I'd much rather just use my hands. I'm gonna go with a no, especially cause there's a lot of stuff going on here. Like this is 40 bucks. This is not free. No to removing roots. Yes to dangerous. How about sterilizing though? You know, maybe. So these are, relatively clean balls. They've got a little bit of root matter in them. So I guess the question is, if we cook them, can we kill any of the, all the bacteria and everything? I don't really think we need to kill everything. Okay. <laughs> you can hear that, right? <laughs> it's very hard because they're so wet. If you let them dry, yeah, yeah, the, the answer is no. Yes, you probably could if you had like special equipment that you could run this under and it was safe. But for the home gardener, I'm going to go with a, a too hard basket. Uh, too dangerous, too hard. Because I'm quite lazy and risk averse, I'm going to just um, let this run with the rest of the roots in it and let the physical movement do the work. I did it so you don't have to. I mean, do what you like. Now, if you're lazy like me, for the leftover root balls, just throw them into something that's gonna drain and let them dry out. If you're happy to lose like a liter or two, I wouldn't even worry about it. Every couple of years, buy another bag of hydrogen. Pretty much all of the balls are out of the roots. And we've reclaimed all of the balls. Okay, so for this process, you will need two large flexi storage tubs. Now, these are 50 liter tubs, I'm pretty sure. Altogether, they will hold one 45 liter bag of hydrogen clay balls. You'll also need this. This is a soil colander, and this is going to fit perfectly into the base of our containers with a little bit of room to spare so you can get your fingers around it. So these are all my clay balls. These don't particularly need to be in a sieve at the moment. I just have it, so I'm gonna use it. I'm gonna try and collect all my clay balls. <laughs> interesting. Wish me luck. Take these outside. So I've got this container full of clay balls. I've got a 20 liter bucket, which was the dry clay balls from on top. So to start with, I'm just going to fill my soil sieve 
with clay balls and all the roots should just float out. And they're pretty clean. There's a couple of rogue roots. That's good enough for me. Put that into our next container. Remove any roots you can see. Don't be too particular. I'm gonna just empty that out a little bit. And I'll do the same again. I'm pretty happy with that. So, next. Again, don't be too particular. You really have to like put into perspective. These do not have to be sterile. The only thing we're trying to sterilize is any pathogens, insects, uh, eggs, or anything that is going to carry over disease to the next plant. The actual organic plant matter doesn't matter. You've got to remember that plants, they live in soil. They're literally evolved to cope with and thrive from um, dead organic matter. That's what they survive on. Well, the nutrients that come from that decaying organic matter that's broken down by soil biology, but they have to live within that area already. I've never ever tried to achieve a sterile hydroponic system. You're just setting yourself up for failure. You really wanna work with biology. You can use mycorrhizal fungi, beneficial bacteria. If you want a healthy hydroponic system, you're better off populating the niches that the pests and diseases will live in with beneficial bacteria and stuff. Healthy plants will protect themselves. The best prevention is the right environment and the right nutrient solution. I'm just gonna keep doing this until I've cleaned the whole 45 liters. It's gonna go pretty fast actually. Another good reason to have these cleaned is because you don't want any of the um, salt build up and I'm just cleaning the ones off the top and you can see uh, in the top there, some of the white stones, uh, the white ones are from, that's uh, hydroponic salt buildup from the hydroponic nutrients traveling, wicking essentially up the side of the stone and drying on the stone. We kind of want to rinse that off so that we have just a, a clean slate next time. There is also algae and mold on these stones, but we'll take care of that and I'll show you how. But again, there's no way you're gonna get rid of all algae in your system. It's gonna be present in the water you're using. Don't stress, please don't stress. Okay, so I'm gonna class this step as kind of optional. Really the only reason that you need to do this is if you have a pathogen or pest that you're trying to kill in your grow media. If your plants are healthy, there is likely nothing in here that can cause them harm. However, if you wanna be safe, we can just do it anyway. Um, because it's not extremely expensive, but hydrogen peroxide. This is going to sterilize the grow media. For this, rather than just putting water in here, guesstimating uh, how much there is, put it into a 20 liter bucket and we're gonna dilute the 50% hydrogen peroxide. This is it, 50%. We're going to uh, dilute a liter of the 50% hydrogen peroxide into 19 liters of water. That's gonna give us about a 5% solution. That is going to heavily disinfect our grow media. It's not gonna leave any residue that is going to harm the plants at all. It's volatile. It will oxidize before it even touches the plants, especially if you leave this any amount of time. And when you add water to it, it's just gonna oxygenate the water anyway. Be careful. It's a corrosive liquid, especially at the strength that I'm working at. And I can hear the comments already. You get this at a cleaning supply store or a chemical supply store. It'll be in your local industrial area. If you go to a hydroponic shop, they are gonna rob you blind. It's the same stuff. It's, it's just 50% hydrogen peroxide. One liter, use appropriate PPE. So my water is tank water. This is like the strength of the hydrogen peroxide solution that you get from the pharmacy. What the hydrogen peroxide does is it rips apart the cell membranes of single-celled 
organisms. However, a useful piece of information, roots have a boundary layer on them that is a protective layer against oxidation. So you can use this in a hydroponic system without the harming of the plants in the right quantities. I wanna get you close for this because I can hear it bubbling from the little amount that I just put in. So I'm gonna pour this whole 20 liter bucket in. Wow, that only took 20 liters. Perfect. Wow, you can actually see it bubbling away. How good's that? That's incredible. Look at that. So what's happening here is uh, all the bacteria and algae are getting their cell walls ripped apart. The H2O2 is donating an oxygen to their cell wall, becoming water, and the radical op oxygen is just going nuts. That's crazy. Hey, look at that. That is cool. This is all oxygen, which is flammable. I know, I'm a big kid, but like... I thought that was actually gonna flame. It's not. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna let that oxygen do its work. I might come along and give it a bit of a mix around every now and then. After it's settled, after a few hours or a day, I'm gonna come back and drain off the water and I'm gonna put them into my favorite basket and wash them off. Okay, so it's been about 24 hours and there is still some bubbles coming out of the solution. You can still see some activity on the top of the water there, um, but it's had plenty of time to completely sterilize. There wasn't really anything in the media I was specifically trying to sterilize, so I'm not particularly worried. So it looks like all the roots have come to the top as well. So we can just take those roots off. It's perfectly fine to put your hands into this. This would be way less than a 5% solution now. And even at that strength, it's not really a problem. So all of our roots have actually floated to the top, which is good. And we can drain this off and wash these balls. I'm just gonna pour this tub directly into my basket. You can use one of those soil colanders if you like. And if you do that, you'll only need the two buckets and the one colander. And the colanders are available at like nursery supply stores, my hardware store as well. So we're just going to tip this like so. And then we can just rinse them out with our hose. And have a look at those clay balls. They are as if a brand new. There's no salt buildup anymore. There's no green tinge from any algae. Just completely reset and ready to use. Hydrogen clay balls. All right. Well, I hope you enjoyed this episode of Who Chose. Happy hydroponicking, and I'll see you next time on Who Chose.